Welcome, we're going to see a little issue about this Sonicare Philips for kids. What happened to me is that this piece broke, so we're going to look at how to dismount it and a little bit what is inside. For background, this is a great toothbrush overall. My idea was to share one main like driver and change the head so that this head is changed multiple times a day. It has been already years. And suddenly, yes, this piece that is supposed to be inside came off and it doesn't really want to hold well. First thing when you want to dismount it is that he already removed, but I basically use a screwdriver, carefully put it between that soft material and this back, put it up. Be a bit careful as here there's some ceilings, so don't break it. L is mm, some water might go in. Now, once you've done that, everything comes off. Here, this is empty. That tiny top one here comes off. And this is the whole device. So we have here a little coil for the remote charging of this battery. Um, probably those should, that should be the driving for the charger. This is the main chip that controls, it is programmable probably programmed using this UART. Um, not sure if you can change it. We'll take a look a bit at if we can peek inside. Uh, the, for the control, there are two buttons on this one. That's the on and off. Here it is on high mode. And if I toggle, now I'm in low mode. It's a bit weaker. So here it drives this coil, this coil is then going to, let's see, yeah, this, this is going to move this part and let's open it a bit to have an idea. Um, so first, so this does not hold. So I, I want to see what's happening here. So there's visibly a tiny clip. If I'm careful, I should be able there to push it off. This goes off. This whole thing seems to be a way to block so that the um, motion is only on the side. So like, like this, that's the only thing it allows. If we turn it on, yeah, we can barely see it. So that means that it vibrates a toothbrush like this. This is the issue, literally. This is, in my opinion, a bad design. Okay, this holds well, no problem there. That might be a weight that is calculated so that um, so that it just gives the right vibration, I'm not sure. And it just slides here. So there's a tiny mark so that you can only put it in one angle, which is good because it's going to rotate. However, it looks like it has been factory forced inside their small grooves and so pushed inside and then hoping that it will not move. So there is no screw and there's no way easy that I'm going to fix this thing. Which means I will need to glue it. I'm not really happy about that. So I'll try to glue it. And for the, here, the silicone, getting it through the first part. I'm sure it will be quite easy. Come on, there. But there's another blocker and I'm quite sure it's supposed to be there. So that will also be interesting if I, I need to remove this part which wiggles but it does not want to come off. 
I'm not sure if I can get it off in any way. I cannot turn it. I can twist it just on the side in the other direction. Not really. So there's something holding it back. This, it was probably meant to be clipped one way and never come off. So if you they pull strongly and probably the silicone was holding at the end and then it's, it just went off. I managed to get this out. So the way it w I did it is I held it and then I, because I saw that it was blocked, then I turned it. And once I turned it, it managed to just move. And so you can see the you can see that they are still everything in place. It seemed, I don't think it damaged it. And the fact of turning it made that it went from this groove inside to this flat part. So now that this is done, I can have my silicone just where it belongs here. Put this one back. doesn't want to go so easily, of course. Yeah, yeah, do I have it back? Yes, it is back. It's not going off. And now it's set. Now it's holding. And now I can glue it back here and it should work again. So let me bring my oscilloscope. Uh, Oops, let me keep one volt. That should be good. Let's see what it gives. Okay. We have quite higher frequencies. Let me lower this here. Here we have a better view. So now we have one millisecond on this axis. So it is going to plus three volt about, let me see. Yeah, three, four volt, about four volt, minus four volt difference is almost eight volt, seven to eight volts. And it's waiting a bit in the middle, as you can see. Uh, frequency is around 260 Hertz. This is the low mode. Just, I mean, the not so strong. Let's try the strong mode. And now we have, it looks like the middle, the duration is a bit longer. Frequency is the same, voltage is the same, but it looks like it's a bit longer. Let me try again this one. Yeah, this is quite more narrow. Here, yeah, those are thicker. I believe that when they programmed it, they've set it for kids version, it is quite weaker than the one for adults. So I guess you could reprogram it so that it's even stronger. I'm not sure why you would want to do that for a toothbrush that is meant for children, but it's probably like a software setting that they had. Okay, that's about it. So. I'm curious to know if other Sonic Air have the same flaw. This is, was probably partly done for cost reasons, but I imagine it's also very well designed to just last long enough in case you want to cheap out on buying multiple toothbrushes as well. Very clever. That's it for this time. So see you next time. And don't and remember to subscribe, leave your comments. I'm curious to know though what you thought about about this.